Welcome to Module 2 of Sacramento Online Weather Spotter Training. This module will cover some National Weather Service definitions and discuss thunderstorms and associated severe weather. How do we send out alerts to hazardous weather? Well, there are watches, warnings, and advisories. So what's the difference between them? For the watch, conditions are favorable for severe weather in or near the watch area. There's the potential for hazardous weather. This is issued ahead of an event. With a warning, severe weather is imminent or occurring in a warned area. For an advisory, non-severe nuisance weather is imminent or occurring. This is a lower level alert than the warning, but hazardous conditions are possible if proper safety measures aren't taken. What's the definition of a severe thunderstorm? The national criteria is it's a thunderstorm that produces hail one inch in diameter or larger the wind gusts 58 miles an hour or greater. Even if the wind zone quite reaches criteria, we would like reports, especially when winds are causing damage, such as large limbs coming down. We'd also like to be called for hail larger than pea size, when small hail is covering the ground. The tornado is a violently rotating column of air descending from a thunderstorm in contact with the ground. Funnel cloud is a rotating funnel-shaped cloud extending from the base of a thunderstorm, but not touching the ground. Note that the visible condensation cloud with a tornado doesn't always touch the ground, while the winds may. This photo shows swirling debris on the ground with a visible funnel well above. This swirling debris shows that this is a tornado. Always look below funnels to see if there is contact with the ground. Lightning and thunder, by definition, are part of every thunderstorm, so warnings are not issued for them specifically. Only report lightning if there are injuries or deaths. Automated sensors already notify us of lightning strikes. Lightning is deadly and kills dozens and injures hundreds every year. Be careful and do not become a statistic. If you can hear thunder, it's not safe to be outside. Shelter indoors or in a vehicle if possible. So what are the three ingredients needed to make a thunderstorm? You need moisture, instability, and lift. Without enough moisture, especially in the low and middle levels of the atmosphere, thunderstorms cannot develop. Instability generally comes from warm air wanting to rise, just like a hot air balloon. This can come from heating by sunlight, by cooling aloft, or a combination of both. Mountains and hills can provide lift, or atmospheric boundaries like fronts or outflow boundaries can have a similar effect. When all three ingredients are abundant, stronger storms are possible. There are three stages of thunderstorms. The first is developing cumulus, dominated by updrafts, is dry and building. The mature storm has updrafts and downdrafts with the top of the storm peaking up, sometimes toward the stratosphere, and forming an anvil as it freezes and spreads horizontally. This is when severe weather phenomena such as hail, tornadoes, and heavy rain are most likely. The dissipating phase has a storm dominated by downdrafts, with gusty downburst winds most likely as the storm collapses. Hail and rain may still continue through this phase, but tornadoes are not likely. Cumulonimbus are mature developed thunderstorms. Supercells are thunderstorms which have rotating updrafts and have the best potential for severe weather such as tornadoes and large hail. Some features that can be seen in mature supercells include a well-defined rain-free base, generally in the southwest portion of the storm. This is where wall clouds can form, connected rotating lowerings of the cloud base, as can be seen in the lower photo. Supercell tornadoes can drop out of a wall cloud, so they should be closely watched rotation or funnel development. Other features include shelf clouds, overshooting tops, and flanking clouds. A feature of developed thunderstorms, but not necessarily supercell, include the anvil, which is the upper portion of the storm, which is spreading out and freezing at high elevations. Mattis clouds are bubble-shaped clouds which show a mature thunderstorm. Overshooting tops indicate a very strong updraft, they look like cauliflower above the anvil. This can indicate a strong storm with a heightened potential for severe weather such as large hail. Generally, this feature can only be seen from a distance. Hail is an element of severe weather which can cause damage and even injuries. 
Stay indoors and estimate hail size while hail is falling. When it is safe to go outside, you can measure the largest hailstones with a roller or compare them to an object such as a coin. Please don't use marbles as they can vary in size. We like to be called when hail is larger than pea size. Smaller hail can be reported if it's covering the ground and causing slippery travel on roads. Hail in Northern California can sometimes reach several inches deep and the depth should be measured with a roar. Hail does quite a bit of damage each year, damaging crops, vehicles, even home windows and roofs when it is large. Large hailstones can go 100 miles an hour or more. Thunderstorms can produce strong winds that drop down and spread out as they strike the ground. Wind speeds with downbursts can exceed 100 miles an hour and do damage similar to that of a tornado. The damage from a downburst spreads outward as the wind strikes the ground. These are considered straight line winds as opposed to the swirling converging winds of a tornado. This ends Module 2, National Weather Service Definitions and Elements of Thunderstorms and Associated Spear Weather.